Let's talk about the seven surprising signs that your blood sugar is way too high. The first question is, can you actually feel high blood sugar? Normally, you can't feel too much unless it's really, really high. You might feel a little fatigued, but where the symptoms come in is when the blood sugars go down. Take a look at this little graph. Right here, we have this little red line that goes up, and then it comes down past this level line where I wrote 80 on the left side, and that basically is normal blood sugar. You're not supposed to have a lot. When people overeat carbohydrates, the blood sugar goes up, and insulin's gonna do two things. It's gonna remove the sugar from the blood, okay, to help bring down the blood sugar, but it's also gonna open the door in all of your cells to allow this sugar to go in the cell so you can use it as fuel. A lot of the symptoms I'm gonna talk about are related to a problem with low blood sugar and low blood sugar in the actual cell because insulin's not working very well anymore. You develop something called resistance and I'm talking about insulin resistance in the cell and that's represented in this other image where you have this little key being insulin and in the cell, you have this little lock in there, right? That's the receptor for insulin. That key is not fitting into the lock anymore. Then you get all these symptoms that I'm gonna describe next, now that you understand what insulin and insulin resistance really is. The first one is super common, and this is excessive urination. If you have to get up through the night to urinate, suspect you have a blood sugar problem. Now, I'm not talking about diabetes. It could be a pre-diabetes. The problem is when you have too much sugar in the blood, it gets filtered by the kidneys into urine, and wherever the sugar goes, the water goes. You're basically losing fluid when you eat sugar. The kidney is dumping sugar and water because sugar is too toxic. If you're a guy, you might automatically assume it's your prostate, when in fact, it's probably just insulin resistance. And think about how many medications that people are on just because their diet is not right. Number two, excessive thirst. Why are you excessively thirsty? Could be because you're losing water. When you have too much sugar in your blood, you retain sodium. And if you're retaining this more concentrated sodium in the body, you're gonna need more water to dilute it. This is why when you have high blood glucose, you are going to be dehydrated. You'll probably be very potassium deficient because you're locking up a lot of potassium in the liver if you're consuming too many carbs. When you start losing too much potassium, then you can't sleep, your heart rate goes up, your blood pressure might go up, you might have a lot of issues with that. Number three, skin changes, especially in the folds of the body, like the folds of your neck underneath your armpit. The skin becomes a little bit darker because you have too much glucose. The darker folds around your body just basically mean you got blood sugar issues. Number four, brain fog and fatigue. Now, I had this for years and I had no idea it was my blood sugar. I was eating a lot of carbs. I was trying every single vitamin. It never worked. I had such brain fog. It was terrible. You are getting literally starvation of glucose or fuel inside the neurons are just starving for fuel and they just can't work anymore. If I continued on that path, I probably would go right into dementia because that's what dementia is, starvation of the neurons. Number five, mood swings. If someone's cranky, they're highly irritable, suspect they have a blood sugar that's too high that ends up going too low because of the insulin situation. A lot of mood disorders involve blood sugar issues. I mean, if a psychiatrist would just get their patients on a ketogenic diet, they would probably wipe out between 80 to 90% of these mental problems. Number six is cravings. Not necessarily just for sugar, but also for salty carbs, like chips, things like that. You're not thinking in the future of what's gonna happen after you eat that carb. You just want it now. You want instant relief. I was there. I would keep feeding the body what it's in the mood for, not what I should be consuming. And that's a really a bad question to ask your body what it's in the mood for because it's not gonna give you the right answer. And number seven is blurry eyes. The lens of the eye that helps you focus is swollen. It's filled up with fluid. Over time, what happens is the inside of the eyelid becomes reddened and also it feels like sand is in there. I mean, this sounds so obvious to me and, and probably you, but the doctors don't focus on the diet. Doctors are taught to treat the blood sugar with medication and then carry some candy in your pocket if your blood sugars get too low 
And I feel bad for some of these medical doctors that go into medicine because they really want to help people. But unfortunately, some of the tools that they're taught are not the best tools to fix a problem, only to manage a problem. I run into people all the time that are diabetics and their diabetes is being managed and they think that's a total solved problem. But in fact, it's not. And sometimes I have to withhold my suggestion because honestly, they can get rid of this in a few weeks, maybe up to a month. A couple things about how to solve this problem. You want to run your body on a different fuel. We want to lower glucose and then the body is automatically going to start switching to a different fuel source and that's called ketones. Ketones come from your fat. This is why you're going to lose weight. The way to get your body to burn ketones is to lower your carbohydrates below 50 grams per day. I would recommend lowering it like 20 grams a day. And another thing I would do, now that you understand what insulin is, right? We want to do things opposite to insulin. We need to increase the opposite hormone. That's called glucagon. How do we do that? We do that by consuming high quality protein, red meat or fish or even eggs, super important. And that protein will trigger the opposite hormone and help bring you back to a good blood sugar situation very quickly. An A1C measures your blood sugars over a period of 120 days. You're measuring how much glycated protein you have in your blood. When you combine sugar to your hemoglobin that's protein, then it's glycated. The more percentage of your blood protein hemoglobin that is glycated, the more severe diabetes you have. There's one little thing I want to mention about this. If you are starting on a ketogenic diet or even a carnivore, which you're not eating any carbs at all, you're just doing meat and things like that, you may notice that your A1C might stay higher or go back up a little bit. What you have to realize that a lot of people don't realize is that when you do the ketogenic diet, this healthy version of the keto or carnivore, you're extending the life of your red blood cells. Instead of that 120 days, it could be 130 days or 140 days or 150 days. The A1C will actually go up because the red blood cell lives longer. This is not your problem getting in a worse off condition. This is just basically your red blood cell living longer, which throws off the formula a little bit. Now that you know about that, the next thing to know is the details of what to eat. And for that information, you should watch this video right here. Check it out. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide. Major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan. Okay. If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning, it goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, 
If you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.